I made some changes to my website and it's not showing up again. Have you tried clearing the cache? My cache? Yeah, your cache. What, like this cache? <laughs> no, your browser cache. I have no idea what that is. Okay, let me explain. Caching is basically storing data so that it can be re-accessed. When you go onto a website using your web browser, it's going to store data on that website so next time you visit it, it's not going to have to load everything from scratch. Easy? <sighs> okay, let me try to explain this in a different way. What's 3744 divided by 4? You can use your calculator. It's 936. And now if I ask you again, what's 3744 divided by 4? Can you tell me the answer? Easy, I already know that one. It's 936. There you go, that's how caching works. Because you've already calculated it, you can remember it, and when I ask you the second time, you already knew the answer. Oh, that makes sense. Why did you ask me for cash? I... How's it going everyone? In this video, I'm going to give you a quick and easy explanation on what caching is, how it works, and how we can clear the cache on your WordPress website. If you're ready, let's get started. Nowadays, it's become expectation for everything on the internet to load super fast. People expect websites to load under a couple seconds and anything longer than that can be considered a bad experience. Fast load times like this are majorly possible with the help of caching. In simple terms, as I mentioned earlier, a cache consists of frequently accessed data like web pages, photos, and text that's saved and stored temporarily so that it can be called upon much quicker in the future. When a visitor arrives on a website, the web browser will request information from the server where the website is hosted. Then it will wait to receive the data that makes up the website and its content. Once the web browser receives the data, it can display the website on screen. Now, if this process was done every time someone visited your website, it can result in long load times and a bad user experience. This is where caching makes a huge difference. If we take the analogy from the intro, the first visitor to the website asks the maths question. Then our website will calculate and provide that answer to the question. Then when someone else visits the website and asks the same question, the server will already have the answer ready to present it quickly without having to calculate it again. Make sense? Similarly, our website data will be stored as a cache, and instead of requesting all the website data each time the website is accessed, the cache will be loaded instead, resulting in a much faster load time for the website. So caching can really help provide better page performance, an improved user experience, and even more conversions as well. Other than improved page performance, caching also has other benefits like reduced network costs, better SEO because of faster website speeds, no network congestion, and lower bounce rates for your website too. It's important to know that there's different types of caching too. These are site, browser, and server caching. A site cache is data from your website, like images and other content, that's temporarily stored when your web page is loaded for the first time. It's kind of like a person's memory. Remember the maths problem analogy? Just like that. The only thing to watch out with this type of caching is when you're making any changes to your website. If the content on your website changes and the cache is not updated, it will continue to show content that's no longer up to date. However, it's possible to control how long the cache data should be stored for. So if your website regularly updates its content, you can set the cache to expire much sooner, making sure your visitors see content that's up to date. Now, browser cache is similar to site cache, where it's another type of client-side caching. But as the name suggests, a browser cache is built for your web browser. With browser caching, the content is stored on your computer using web browsers such as Google Chrome. These files include HTML pages, CSS, images, and more. When you visit a website, your browser will then store this data for quicker access later on. If the page has any updates, the stored cache will be replaced with a new and updated one. But you'll have to do this manually by clearing out your browser cache. And finally, server cache. These are exactly what it sounds like. These are caches that are stored on your site server. These caches are fully controlled by the server and includes various types like object caching, CDN caching, and more. Now that we have an understanding of what caches are, let me show you how we can clear the cache on your WordPress website. To do this, there are many plugins that we can use, such as WP Rocket, Cloudflare, and more. But for this video, let me demonstrate using a plugin called W3 Total Cache. You can find it in the WordPress repository and you can install and activate it like any other plugin. Once installed, you can click on Performance on the left-hand menu, and then you can go and click on Empty All Caches right here. And just like magic, that will clear all the cache for your website. And now, if you want to clear your browser cache, it's even simpler. Let me demonstrate using Google Chrome. Click on the three dots on the top right corner of your Chrome window, then go into Settings. Next, click on Privacy and Security, and then you can click on Clear Browsing Data. From here, you can select Cached Images and Files and choose a time range. Once you're all set, you can press Clear Data to clear your browser cache. It's as easy as that. If you got value from the video, make sure you leave a like down below, subscribe to our channel by clicking over here, and don't forget to turn on the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.